Good morning, everyone. Good morning. The scripture says that we're to praise the Lord. It is a good thing to praise the Lord. So let's uh, stand as we go before the Lord today with that in mind. In all things, we're to give praise, no matter what our circumstance is and the situation in life. <coughs> Father, we bless your name and give you praise today for who you are. You're our Redeemer, our salvation, our Savior. We thank you for that. We praise your name. We lift it up today, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this place that we can gather in your name. And with like-minded folks. And we just thank you, dear God. Bless the word as it comes forth. We desire so much to hear from you today. We need it. We need a light into our path, Lord. Lighten our path today with your word. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God's good. Amen. All the time, God's good. And he inhabits the praises. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, hey Ed, Ed, real quick. I just... Uh, I just want to recognize Richard. And Richard, he's a little <laughs> Welcome, Richard, back. Richard, we love you. Amen. And we're so glad you're here with us. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus. It is so good that, you know, times can be going pretty rough days, days sometimes. And, and, and I don't know for you, but God will put a song in my heart. And it will stay with me all day long. And I'm just, I'm just so thankful for that. Amen. Amen. Thank you. If not a song, he'll put a word in there. Amen. God is so good, Lord. Lord, I come.
Thank you, Lord. He is a miracle worker. Amen. Praise the Lord. This next song, King of Glory, I always ask to sing it because he is the King of Glory. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and all that dwell therein, for he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Lord God, we just praise your holy name. And who is this King of your Glory? <clears throat> Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lift up the everlasting doors, and the King of glory will come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lift up the everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, Yahweh Tzebaot, he is the King of glory. Hallelujah. We praise your name today, Lord God. We praise you, King. You are the King of glory. And you are welcome in this place. And without you, we are nothing. Yeah. So we just thank you today for your presence here among us. Yeah. That you walk among us. That you love us. That we are the sheep of your pasture. Yeah. That you so loved us, Lord. And we just thank you and we praise you, King of glory. Thank you, Father.
Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mexican 
place there. It was getting one o'clock. We, we were pressing, trying to get there, holding off eating lunch to get to that spot because we were so close to get there. We kept pushing to get there, and we were going to eat at this Mexican place we'd eaten numerous times before. And as I got off the exit and I was turning on the road off of the end of the exit, there was a restaurant right there. I mean, right there, as we got off. Crystal, Crystal Hamburgers. I was raised on that when I was a little kid. You could buy them for a dime a piece. Seriously, the little tiny burgers, the little tiny burgers. I used to, when I was real young, we'd go get those little 10 cent burgers. Now they're a little bit more, but not a whole lot. But anyway, we, I said, let's stop there, Joe. Now, I don't know why, let's just stop there. Come on. We don't need a lot, so let's get a little bit. So I, I ordered one special, four burgers with a fry and one drink. I said, my wife and I are going to share that, and um, that, that'll be enough for both of us. And, and, he, and the guy waited on us, he was the manager, a real nice guy. And he, and, he, and he brought my stuff, and he actually brought two drinks. We ordered, bought, bought one, with, and he wanted to split them up, so I want y'all to have a cup. He was real nice to us, I mean, just overly nice. And we sat down, and he came out and sat down in the, in the restaurant area himself as the manager. He was talking to some of the employees, and they were talking about uh, there's a boycott of uh, Crystal Burgers in Atlanta downtown because they won't take cash anymore, only take uh, digital credit, and they won't take cash. And they're talking, they're all talking this in the restaurant, and I'm over there with Joan eating a little burger, and uh, I thought, this is a great opportunity. I hollered across the thing. I said, better get used to it. Everything is going to be digital. You're not going to be able to buy a pack of gum because there won't be no cash sales anywhere. And that sparked everything. Then I started teaching on Bible prophecy, to what we had just talked about on Sunday. And buy or sell unless you have the mark and digital currency and the digital bank moving very towards that very quickly. There'll be no cash, cashless society. And then it just kept getting greater and bigger. We were doing the whole lesson in the restaurant. And then I realized I had brought the same notes. Now you remember the notes I gave you were six pages, three pages back to back. I've never given out that many notes at one time to speak of, never. Anyway, I went to the car. I was bringing some to my kids, so I had notes in the car. Went back in, had the notes to give out to Brandon. Go Brandon. I mean, it was just a nice guy. He was so nice. And he was so excited when he saw those six pages of notes on Bible property. He said, I've got to get my kids right with God. Things are happy. He said, I've been reading the Bible. He said, I've been reading prophecy. And this is just what I've been needing and wanting. And I gave him six notes. And he was just so happy. We grabbed one another as I left. And listen, God will give you an opening. If you'll just be a, pay attention, and you'll be able to share some good things, it happens. You just want to take the time to, to do that and be aware of those situations. Today, I did a message similar to what I'm going to give you, but not near as meaty as I made this one. I, I, I took this one and added a lot more meat to it and rearranged it. I gave it six, seven years ago here, but I... I gave a lot more to, to the notes. And it was interesting. The name of the message is, Don't Let the Enemy of Your Faith Wear You Down. Well, we typed what I had changed and we couldn't get the printer to work. And I was getting very frustrated for, after about the first hour. Then we called Ray, the tech guy. This, this is Saturday, Saturday night now. Call Ray, the tech guy. No, this is Friday night. And Ray works for an hour. He has access to our computer we use for the church. He's messing with it. He can't do anything with it. It won't let us send an email. It won't let us print what I just, for this message. So I'm preaching on don't let the enemy wear you down. And I'm getting really worn down trying to get this message out. Because I need a copy of it. This shows you how things work, right? I was getting really wear, wear, wore down with this thing. 
anyway, he finally fixed where we could email it. It took, took about an hour or so, fixed it where we could email it to him. So he could email it to the church, so Joe could print it out so I could come yesterday morning and we could get it all together for today. Roundabout way. But the name of the message is, don't let the enemy of your faith wear you down. Lord, speak to us today. It's amazing what you want to do. And Father, we thank you for what we've already experienced and what we're going to experience as we close out this time together in the Word of God. We've sang it, now we're going to look at it. We're going to talk about it in this way. And thank you, Lord, for speaking to us today. And everybody said. Amen. Interesting passage in Daniel, a prophetic passage. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out, wear down the saints of the Most High. Speaking of the blasphemy of the Antichrist, who will oppose, who will defy, who will challenge the Most High God, who oppresses with persecution. He shall speak great words against the Most High. The Antichrist, the, the, the spirit of Antichrist, the devil himself wants to oppose all that is God and all that is true. He wants to defy the truth of God. He wants to oppose the truth of God. Everything that God is doing in your life, He wants to oppose it. He wants to challenge it. Everything that God is doing in your life and in your the work that God is doing in the grace of your life, He tries to oppose it and tries to defy it. And he challenges those things that God does and wants to do in our lives. And in 2 Peter 2.7, referring back to Genesis 19, which is very interesting, and he rescued righteous Lot, greatly worn out, or one translation says vexed, and he rescued righteous Lot, greatly vexed or worn out, distressed by the behavior of the Sodomites or the wanton ways of the ungodly, the lawless, the Amplified Bible puts it that way. Lot lived in a very difficult time and he was vexed in his spirit. He was worn out, worn down from the time, signs of the time and the ways that he was, where he was living. How many of us feel vexed in our spirit when we see what's going on in the culture? Yeah. Do you see the news and you watch the news and you see what's happening and you just feel vexed in your spirit? You feel Worn out when you hear what's happening in families. It just works on us. The lawlessness and the ungodliness of, of the culture. But somehow we cannot allow the enemy of our faith to wear us down. Can't do it. As believers, we all have a great adversary. But we have a greater, we have a greater, greater advocate. 1 Peter 5, 8, Be sober, vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Some of the great preachers of the past said, he's a roaring lion, but the Lord has knocked his teeth out on him. <laughs> so he's, a, he's, a he's a toothless devil. I always thought that was funny to hear guys, older, older men, older ministers say that. We are faced with a very powerful adversary every day. He's 24-7. How many knows he's 24-7? Yeah, for sure. The word angel in the scripture means messenger. Satan, the devil, or the Greek word diabolos, which means to oppose He's simply a fallen angel. 
That's who the devil, who Satan is. He's a fallen angel. Diabolos. To oppose everything that God is and everything that God does. As a messenger, Satan primarily speaks to our minds. Come on. He's a messenger. Hello? That's what he does. He brings messages. He's a messenger. He's trained to be a messenger. Angels are messengers. But he's a fallen angel. And Satan's primary speaks to our minds. Hence his strategy is to deceive us that we might embrace something that is not true, that is contrary to God's word. How many knows that's true? In the Garden of Eden. What did he say to Eve? Did God really say that? You know. He didn't really mean that. No, no, no. The real battle is Satan's opposition to God. I said the real battle is Satan's opposition to God's glory, to God's power, and to God's truth. That's what he's after. Satan is envious of God's glory. And Isaiah, I will put my throne above his throne, he declared. And he will do everything he can to try to steal God's glory. Even if he comes against us, which we are God's trophies of glory and grace. We are his trophies. Yes, I know. We are something special to God because of what he, he loves us and he has redeemed us. And we are his trophies of grace. And Satan wants to oppose even us as part of that, the glory of God's grace represented in us. But in Paul's Romans 8.28, Paul says, We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. We are not blaming God for what happens to us, but we recognize the providence and the sovereignty of God that he can take any disaster, our tragedy, or the experiences of our life, and he has the ability and the power to make good out of those things that happen to us. Come on. How many knows he has that power to make scrambled eggs something good out of it? Yes. But by the same token, Satan doesn't cause all trials and adversities in life. But if we believe him rather than God, he can use those same circumstances. Listen, the same circumstances that God wants to turn for our good, Satan wants to take those same circumstances to, for evil to defeat us and rob us of victory. He wants to give you a different interpretation to those circumstances. God will turn those circumstances for good. He'll bring good things to our life out of those difficult times of our But Satan will take those same circumstances and he'll, he'll put a different perspective on it. He'll put a different meaning behind it and he will rob us of victory. He is the messenger who distorts God's truth, seeks to change our perspective and our circumstances and experiences and he does it with his lies and his deception. It's just true. All believers have a greater advocate. We have an adversary, but we have a greater advocate. First John 2, 1, if any man see we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ arises. Jesus is now seated at the right hand of the Father. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father because he is done with what he was here for. The mission has been complete. It is finished. It is done. He's in the right hand of the Father and he is present to make intercession for us 24-7. He's there. He's the guarantee. He is the guarantee of our intercession for us. To wear out means to make or become useless, to be spent, to be wasted. I think the world, the world knows what it means 
when they use the term to be wasted. Usually that is speaking of a drunken stupor. To, be, to wear out means to make or become useless, to be spent, to be wasted. We've all come to know Christ. We've been redeemed. But the enemy will try to wear us down so we'll be useless in the kingdom of God. We still may be saved, but we may be useless if he wears us out. When the enemy of our faith wears us out, he has succeeded in taking us out of the fight of faith. Sometimes it may be gradual, sometimes a little bit at a time. It can happen that way. The devil wears us out. He wears our minds by filling our minds with anxious thoughts. I said the enemy is the messenger. He comes with a message and he speaks to our minds, fills our minds with anxious thoughts. If we are filled with anxious thoughts, we can't be effective for the Lord's work. The devil wears out our hearts by filling it with fear and apprehension. Well, when's the next shoe going to drop? If you're, if you're living your life waiting for the next shoe to drop, you can't be a victorious believer if you're always worried about the next shoe to drop. You can't be victorious. Don't let the enemy of your faith wear you down. The devil wears out the saints physically by attacking our bodies. How many have ever been there? The devil attacks our commitments by inviting us to be so preoccupied with the things of the world we cannot carry out our commitments. How many ever felt that experience before? The devil attacks us financially by alluring us to credit purchases to overextend us and put us into financial bondage. If he succeeds in putting us into financial bondage, we can't be true in our giving to God because we feel like we're so overextended that we can't we can't joyfully give to the Lord. One, one person put a dollar in every Sunday. And for about three months, the pastor just had to find out why he only put a dollar in. And he says, I, he, when the pastor asked him, why do you only put a dollar in every Sunday? He says, I'm doing what the scripture says. I give joyfully unto the Lord. A dollar is all I can give joyfully. If you get so extended in, in credit and you can't pay your bills, you can't have the joy of the Lord and you can't give to God the way you're supposed to give to God. I'm working on a message in the next few weeks. On 2000, are you ready to bring your lunch in your little, maybe your pajamas? 2,000 scriptures, 500 scriptures. On, the Bible speaks more about finances, property, and it's everything involved with finances and property. It speaks more about that than it does heaven or hell. How many thinks heaven and hell is important? God speaks more in his word about finances and property than he does heaven or hell. Thousands, hundreds of scriptures. It's going to be interesting. You know what BMW stands for, don't you? bring your wallet. I told my daughter that. She bought one. Now she knows that she has to bring her wallet when she has to have it fixed. Well, I'm not going to preach a date on this, on this financial thing. You better bring your wallet. Listen, the devil attacks us financially if we get overextended and we get in trouble that way. The devil destroys our strength by stealing our joy. Come on. The devil destroys our strength and what is Nehemiah 4, 6? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Now, we defeat the enemy of our faith by our devotion to God. Luke 10, 38-42. This is what you know what's, what this is all about. Two sisters. They're not called the Bobsy twins, but they are sisters. Named Mary and Martha. Martha was trying to be Martha Stewart. Mary was seated at the feet of Jesus. A position of devotion 
and humility. A position of worship, listening and learning. If you want to defeat the enemy trying to wear you down, you're going to have to find some devotion to God. You're going to have to sit at the feet of Jesus and worship and learn and listen and worship Him if you're going to overcome the enemy in your life. He wants to steal your joy. He wants to steal your commitments that you made to God. He wants to harass you every way. He wants to oppose everything that God wants to do in your life. You gotta, you gotta be a Mary. You can't be a Martha. You gotta be a Mary. I think it's interesting the story. It's very interesting. Jesus said, "Martha, Martha," twice. Martha, Martha. You're so distracted. You're so worried about so many things. But Mary hath chosen the good part, the good thing. What is the good thing? Mary was seated at the feet of Jesus in devotion, in humility, in worship, in listening, in learning. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Martha was distracted with much serving by many tasks, worried about so many things, worried about so many things. It's amazing. And the Lord said, Mary hath chosen the good thing. The good part. In, the, in wave translation, it says this way, she shall not be deprived of it. Wave translation says, she, Mary, will not be deprived of it. And I like Martha's translation. She is not going to be dragged away from this. That's right. Just because you have all these things, my sister won't help me. My sister won't help me. No, your sister has chosen the good thing. She has sat at the feet of the Lord in devotion, in worship, in listening, in learning. She will not be dragged away from it. You have to say to the enemy, I will not be dragged away from my devotion to God. Nothing is going to take the place of my worship and my Hallelujah. devotion to Him. You've got, to, you've got to be strong in that area. Our busyness does not get the Lord's attention, but our devotion will. That's right. Jesus said, only one thing is necessary. There's only one thing really most important in life. And that's our intimacy and devotion to God. Just like David of old, Psalms 27, 4. One thing have I asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in His temple. Come on. Mary hath chosen the most important thing. She shall not be deprived of it. She will not be dragged away from it. There's so many things out there trying to get our attention. So many things that need to be done. So many things that are maybe important. But you can't allow your devotion to go undone to God. If you don't have that time to talk to the Lord and sit at His feet, you will be dragged down by the enemy. We have a great advocate, and he will give power to the faint. I said he will give power to the faint, Isaiah 40, 29, 31. But they that wait upon the Lord, those who look to the Lord, he gives power to the faint, vigor to the weary, strength to the exhausted, power to the tired and worn out. Listen, even the young men get weary and faint, he said. But they that wait upon the Lord, they will soar with eagle's wings. They that wait upon the Lord. You can't let anything take away your devotion from God. He sustains and removes fear. He sustains us, Psalms 27, 1. The Lord is my light, my salvation, the strength of my life. Of whom? Shall I be afraid? He defends us, Psalms 31 2, because 
He, be he became to me a rock of refuge, a place of security, a stronghold for my safety. Be my sure protection. He defends us. He removes fear. He sustains us. He gives power to the faith. Psalms 46, 1, he helps us. God is, God is our refuge and strength, help in the time of trouble, distresses. He delivers us, 2 Corinthians 1, 10, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver us in whom we trust. He will yet deliver past, present, future. He delivered us. He's delivered us now. He'll deliver us in the future. I love that verse in 2 Corinthians 1, 10. He forgives and heals us. He pardons all of our sins. He forgives all my, my guilt. He heals all my sickness. He saves your life from death. He crowns you with his love and tender mercies. He redeems us, Jeremiah 50, 34. There, redeemed, the Lord is the host. His name is, he shall be our deliverance, our redemption. The Lord of armies is his name. The Lord of hosts is the Lord of armies. You know that, don't you? He gives victory, 1 Corinthians 15, 17. 57, but thanks be unto God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm here glad. I like what Martha said. The victory is ours. The victory is ours. He makes it ours through the Lord Jesus Christ. Martha puts it that way. The victory is ours. He makes it ours by our Lord Jesus Christ. And he gives us spiritual power. Acts 1 8, you shall receive power, ability, and might. And Ephesians 3 16. Strengthen with all might by His Spirit. If you'll sit before Him, if you'll sit before His Word, if you'll listen to Him and listen to His Word, He will give you strength if you'll wait upon the Lord. Now, I want to take a song this morning that we sing when Joan and I were kids almost. That's how old it is. Uh, why don't you stand together? I love this song. And we, we thought of it on the way here. We wrote it out on the way here. You probably sung it here 30 years ago.
uh, Isaiah 40, 31, is not inactivity. You're not there laying in the bed with the scriptures on your chest hoping to receive it by osmosis. No, waiting is not inactivity. It is seeking, looking, listening, waiting, devotion before God. That's what he's talking about. And let's do that. Let's make that. When the enemy comes to try to wear you out and wear you down, just get that, open that word and start getting that devotion. Sit at the feet of the Lord and be renewed. Oh, he'll, he'll, make you, he'll make you like the eagles, you know? Fly like the eagles. He'll do it. Let's believe God for that, okay? Amen. Jerry, why don't you give us a closing prayer? We are not worthy, Lord God, but you, in your grace and your great love for us, Lord, gave us everything that we need for life, hope, and godliness. We just thank you, Lord, that today, that we don't need to walk in defeat, that because of you and what you've done for us and because yes. of your Holy Spirit, that we can walk in spirit and in truth, that our strength is not of ourselves, yes. Lord, but it's from you. And we seek you, Lord, in everything that we do and everything that we say and everything that we ask, Lord, we lean into you and we lean on you when we are weak, Lord. You are our strength. Lord, we just seek your face and we seek you every hour of every day. We do need you, Lord. We do need you. I thank you, Lord, for this gathering of saints, Lord. And one day soon, we will all be gathered around your throne, yes. worshiping Amen. you. Yes, your might and your majesty, Lord, and your great love for us, which is eternal, eternal and never-ending, Lord, and we thank you for that. And so I just thank you for every person here. Lord, as the week progresses, Lord, help us not to be worn down by wickedness, but help us, Lord, in all things to seek your face and to be as Mary and to sit at your feet and learn from you. For your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And we thank you, Lord, for your grace, your hope, your love, your mercy. And bless every person here. And Lord, give us opportunities this week to tell others about you. Help us not to go forward in defeat, but to go forward in the might and the power of your spirit. And to share words of life with those who are lost and dying. And we ask and pray these things in Jesus' precious, holy name. Amen.